I haven't tried a ASRock Pro Series motherboard in actually quite a long time. They sent their X370 Pro 4 over because they wanted me to test it with the new Ryzen 2400G and they specifically asked me to overclock it as high as I could. So today I'm going to be getting the Corsair H110 IGT. I'm going to be throwing the 2400G on this thing and seeing just how high I can indeed overclock it. Now one thing I will say about the Pro 4, you don't have any of the fancy steel slots or steel slots on the memory. You've just got these heat sinks which look like they'll do a really good job and we will be testing that later here with a fan on to see how much air they can actually dissipate once we actually start cooling them properly. Uh, but another thing about the Pro Series is that lightweight motherboard that just has the essentials, especially if you're an overclocker. There's nothing really fancy. There's no RGB lighting. Again, there's those steel slots. They've gone away with that. They're just giving you straight motherboard for your money. So if I had to pick a motherboard personally, I would go for the Taichi series. Though for some reason, they just keep sending me the Fatality motherboards. And the Fatality motherboards, they're good if you need an onboard 10 gig NIC, but a lot of people don't need a 10 gig NIC. And even if you're looking for more value orientated options, you'd probably get a Taichi and go out and buy your own 10 gig NIC. That way you could port it over to builds in the future. With having a 10 gig NIC plastered onto the board, I mean, you might have to just desolder it and try and plug it onto another motherboard, and that's just not happening at all. So things that I specifically like about this board, on the back here, you've got your input and outputs if you wish to use the Ryzen APU. You've also got seven USB ports plus a Type-C, so eight in total. At the front of the board, you've got six SATA 3 ports, as well as dual NVMe M.2. Now, one thing I will be looking out for today is I do hope I do have the options to overclock the Ryzen 2400G from the BIOS. I already did it in the MSI Mini ITX board, but when I used the Fatality X370 board, I actually couldn't do anything in terms of overclocking the GPU from the BIOS itself, as I personally like overclocking the BIOS as opposed to using the Ryzen Master software. But anyway, we'll put this thing on the test bench and take it for a test drive and see what it can do. So now I've booted this up and I've restarted it and we're in the BIOS and my expectations went from being hopeful to actually being a little bit disappointed. And the reason being there is actually no system on chip voltage control here. And that's actually a really important setting for overclocking your memory manually. Though it has locked in this XMP profile and that is confirmed. So that actually means that the system on chip voltage is there and it's more of a shadow voltage. You just can't see it and it is actually controlled automatically. So. Not a good thing if you're buying a budget kit of memory and you're hoping to get the max speeds possible out of that kit of memory. And I imagine that's going to be a lot of people who would be thinking of buying the Pro 4 since it's a budget motherboard. So I was disappointed in that. I was also disappointed to see that there's no uh, load line calibration setting here as well. Uh, that's a pretty important setting, especially for maximizing your overclocks uh, for 24-7 air or water overclocks. So. Uh, it is running at 4 GHz and it is at 1.42, though keep in mind when I do stress test this, I'd imagine it will be dropping down to 1.3 something. Uh, so we do have to check that. There's also no setting here in the BIOS to overclock the uh, GPU portion as well. So I would like to see ASRock implement that into their BIOS. Uh, other than that, there is the settings, of course, to customize your fan profiles if you need to. So it's good to see that on the X370 board, though. One thing I thought with the X370 boards is you did have that full control over your overclocking. I thought that was part of the X370 license. So um, let's though boot this up and see what we can do with it and see how well it can overclock with the Ryzen Master software. So now we're in the Ryzen Master software and we do actually have system on chip voltage control here. So that is actually good to see. We've also got the APU. We've got full control of that with its clock speeds and its voltage control. So. This motherboard looks like it does have a chance of redemption, uh, but you notice here the CPU voltage is actually quite high. This is at 1.45 volt. That's what it's reading at. Uh, and so this is the problem here, as I was talking about, without load line calibration. I've got it running a stability test at 100% load, and we've got a CPU V core with its current value at 1.37 or 1.36. So that's like uh, quite you know, 90 millivolts below what we had it at before on the setting 1.45 and even there it dipped even more so that's why load line calibration is a really important setting because when we back off the throttle here when we stop this 
we will see that the voltage should go up now. And so well, it did, but then it went into a slumber state. So. So now here we are back at the test bench where I'm going to be talking about this motherboard and of course where they can get it right. This motherboard can be fixed if ASRock overhaul the BIOS, implement things like system on chip voltage control, implement load line calibration which I'd love to see on this motherboard but furthermore implement things like PLL voltage which I feel should exist on an X370 motherboard. NVMe is good on this motherboard. There's also support for a SATA M.2, four memory slots as well for 64 gigabytes of compatibility. Got a heap of USB ports on the back. You've also got really good onboard audio. Now the funny thing about the included onboard audio is it's the first board in a long time that I've seen that hasn't had the crosstalk problem, even at 100 volume. And the crosstalk was actually phenomenal. The frequency response curve was quite good as well, especially for a budget X370 motherboard. It was virtually flat the whole way through with only a minus two decibel drop off on under 10 Hertz, which most users would not even notice at all. The heat sinks as well, phenomenal design. They dissipated heat really well. When we put the fan on these things, we got over a 20 degree drop on the main CPU voltage supply. The system on chip, that dropped over 15 degrees as well. I'd like to actually see this fin design implemented on some of the higher end boards instead of just having a big chunk of metal. So great design on the VRM heatsinks. The VRM itself is decent as well. So everything on this board was checking out. Nothing was wrong except the implementation of that BIOS as we said before. Please ASRock, upgrade the BIOS to give those features that I mentioned before, but also unlock graphics control. And this is another problem I've had. I'd love to see BIOS manufacturers update their BIOS to allow full control of that APU GPU solution. Because what I'm seeing here when I overclock with the Ryzen Master software is I'm seeing clocks that go up to 1600 megahertz in the case of this CPU on this motherboard. Uh, but what we're not seeing is those performance gains. I'm literally getting like one or 2% performance gain going from the base clock on the APU, which is supposedly about 1250 megahertz. And we're meant to go up to 1600 megahertz, which is a sizable boost. That's like near what, 25 or something percent? Yet we're only seeing a one or 2% increase. Yet when I went into the BIOS on the 2200G and overclocked that on the MSI board from 1100 megahertz to 1330 megahertz, I got a sizable increase in performance that was rivaling that of a 2400G out of the box. So please implement graphics portion control in the BIOS, I'd love to see that. Then we could really get down to seeing how far this APU can go when it comes to overclocking. And also with the Ryzen Master software, it was a little bit problematic. There was times when I'd unlock things and I have to restart and then I'd lose control of other things. Another interesting thing that's kind of unrelated to this review that I found out is that if you don't have the latest update of Windows, then you can't install the APU drivers. So I don't know what's going on there and I don't know how this APU would work on Linux in that case. But if you do wanna get the 2200 or 2400G, just make sure you have your Windows updated to the latest creator's update. Anyway, moving on with this motherboard, you get a DVI VGA ports and also a HDMI 1.4B. It's actually not 2.0 compatible. Just make that said because some uh, monitors have a 2.0 only input. And if you try and put a 1.4 in, you'll just get no signal at all. Uh, though you may in base mode get a signal, but once you install drivers, for example, then you could see the motherboard uh, not giving out a signal to the monitor. Yeah. Lastly though, it's time to talk about the price with this motherboard. It's actually in America really well priced, 90 USD. It does work out of the box with the 2200 and 2400G. It does have great onboard audio, NVMe support, and also a pretty solid heatsink design on the VRMs. 
However, it doesn't have those features that I talked about before. So this motherboard would suit someone who just wants to whack in a CPU and be good to go straight from the get-go. Though keep in mind the voltages on that 1.45 volt are a little bit worrisome. Keep in mind when you do start playing games, for instance, and start putting a load on the CPU, they will drop around about 90 millivolts. So the drop in voltage is quite big. And that's because again, it doesn't have load line calibration. So I'd like to see ASRock implement that feature in a BIOS update. And this is one of the funny things. I don't know what they're thinking with not giving these features on this motherboard, because if they're thinking that people are gonna go out and buy the more expensive Tai Chi motherboard, which is an excellent X370 motherboard, it's like literally one of the best motherboards out there, then they must be mistaken because someone with a budget of $90 for a motherboard is gonna buy a $90 motherboard. So if this doesn't have the features they want, then they're probably gonna go out and buy a motherboard from Gigabyte or Zeus. And the sad thing is I've tested B350 motherboards in the past that have had more features than this X370 motherboard here has. And they haven't even had heat sinks on their VRM. Now here's where things get a little bit confusing because in Australia at PC Case Gear and other retailers, this thing costs 180 Australian dollars. At this price, I couldn't recommend this motherboard in Oz. Not for anyone. And I've picked up B350 motherboards that are around about 100 bucks and they have more features than this does, except maybe minus the heat sinks. Though if you are in the US at 90 USD, it is a decent buy if you're not into overclocking at all. I would like to see them, however, update the BIOS and introduce some of those features, then I could see myself recommending this motherboard. However, as it stands in its current state, I'm not too keen on it. Um, it does have a lack of features that me as an enthusiast personally, looking at it with coupled with an X370 license, I just can't ignore for my viewers. And that's the thing, even though ASRock is a channel sponsor, they have to understand that my viewers, you guys, put me here behind this table recording these videos. You guys are always gonna come first. That's not gonna change, that's never gonna change around Tech Air City. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments about this motherboard, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.